Michaela, can you tell us what's going on out in this field? Well, some people might think this is a weed, but we did this on purpose. This is called peola. It's peas and canola that are grown together as a polycrop. We're trying to not grow as many monocrops in our system. So a lot of people have a lot of questions about this, how it's planted, how it's, how it's harvested. And the answer is all together, both times. I mean, obviously when you're dealing with two very different seed sizes, planting can be figure out a depth and our canola stand isn't great this year and part of it's how wet we've been but I think we did seed it a little bit deep but we do seed them together where our goal is a full rate of peas and then canola is kind of like a little bit extra so we're only seeding about two pounds maybe three pounds of canola so we'll seed it all together um, we don't put down any nitrogen kind of hoping for some nitrogen from the Peas. Actually, we didn't even fertilize this field this year. There's sp some spots that the peas will do better, and then there's some spots that the canola will do better. And that's kind of the beauty of a polycrop. And then so we will go through and harvest together. You can never quite harvest perfectly, so you, you kind of a play a little around with the fan setting and everything, but we'll harvest it all together, and then we'll go through and sort it after it's harvested. Last year we just used a rotary screen. We're probably planning on using a quick clean this year but it's not too hard to sort because canola is very small and peas are quite a bit bigger. So, and this is kind of a challenging field for you guys too. It's right on a sand ridge, mm -hmm. you were saying, so the soil conditions aren't the greatest. But the incredible thing is, so how many years has this been no-till? We've been farming this, this is our fifth year, so it's been no-till since then. And you have some pretty light soils that you yes, guys typically yes. deal with, so pretty sandy soils. And so the amazing thing is if you take a shovel full out here, and if you actually look down, we've got some incredible cover. So can you talk about what it was last year? Last year, this was just straight cereal rye that we grew for seed production for, the, for cover crop seed. So they've got a really nice mat of, of residue mm -hmm. from the rye. Um, so erosion control mm -hmm. has been nice. You haven't seen a lot of runoff out here. And so the amazing thing, so carbon inputs and organic matter uh, production in soils like this is really critical. And so you can just see after four years, mm -hmm. I mean, this is beautiful dark soil. And so that means even though we have lighter soil conditions, sandier soil conditions, that you can hold on to that water mm -hmm. longer uh, during the growing season. And so have you noticed, I know you guys say it's a pretty... Uh, it's been a pretty wet year, um, but in previous years, have you noticed, you know, drought stress out here at all? Uh, any sort of... Oh yes, I, when, I, the years that we grew weed out here and soybeans in the first couple of years of farming, it, this definitely struggled to even make, make enough to cover your rent, for sure. But I think it's, it's definitely improved. Rye is a great crop. It's a tough crop to market very well, but I think where we've grown it, we've seen great improvements in the soil and you get it off early. So we did actually see a pretty diverse cover crop mix after. We were really dry, so it didn't really get much more than knee high, but you got a lot of diversity in that as well. And then were you able to come over and graze that? There was plans, but we decided the growth wasn't enough to justify getting the cows all the way here. It's, it, this would be a trek to get the cows here. But it was nice to have a cover yes. during that part of mm -hmm. that winter and uh, keep that, that diversity going in your system. Yeah, and there wasn't rye in that mix, but there was volunteer rye that actually overwintered here pretty well, and Benjamin made it sound like it was a really good seed bed to seed into compared to other things, especially as wet as of spring we had. It really helped with that. So overall, even though we've had some challenges this growing season, is this something you're gonna consider for next year? Absolutely. We did small scale, we did some six to 10 acre fields of Piola last year. And we really didn't see much of a yield loss on the peas. And then the canola is kind of a little bonus, maybe two, 300 pounds of canola on top of your normal pea yield. Um, we actually even tried some pea oat ola with oats and that was awesome. But marketing oats that have had split peas is uh, difficult. So we decided not to do that option this year. There's actually even some herbicides. Uh, that's another thing that's difficult about this, having weed control. And there are, Raptor is a, is a herbicide that we can use on both. So that's, that has been the option that we can use on weed control. And really, if you look out here, the weed pressure yep. is really minimal because you have that cover. Yep. Um, and so that's really working to your benefit too. I think having diverse, like the, the, the peodola, we had no weed control options. So that was a little bit of a challenge, but that being considered, there actually wasn't much for weed pressure because I think because there were already, there was a brassica, there was a, a cereal crop, 
and then there was um, a legume. So you kind of already had a little bit of diversity and there wasn't as much weed pressure, I think, because of that. Yeah. NRCS has given some guidance. We're, we're doing an adaptive management trial and especially when we started doing the interseeding, we had no idea what species to use. Like obviously, things from southern Minnesota don't necessarily work up here, but it was a nice place to start. And we've kind of worked on some of our seed mixes to tailor to what we kind of tailor to our goals, but also kind of meeting what they have found through research that works well. We've enrolled in both CSP and EQIP over the last three to six years. We, have, we did renew our contract. So this actual particular field is in EQIP. This is the last year for that. That is a three-year cover crop cost share. Your dad made a really good point yesterday about how you shouldn't do it just for the payment, that mm -hmm. it should be a way for you to use that money to be creative or to kind of push mm -hmm. you in that. I thought that was a really good point that he made. Yes, I, I, I agree that if you're just doing it for the money, it's kind of the wrong reason. I, like It's a great incentive to kind of let you get out of your comfort zone and to be able to feel like farming is a really hard time right now. The commodity prices are poor and it doesn't seem like it's going to get any better. It's really hard to make money. So a lot of people might enroll in these programs just for the financial incentive and it's helpful for that but if it it kind of allows you that incentive that you can take risks and not on all your acres. I'm not saying go plant something like peola on all your farm. We did it in like three six acre fields last year just as kind of to try. Like start small, like then we could sleep at night. Being able to use things like the Equip or the CSP or other cost shares that are around kind of allow you to try it. And we've kind of always dedicated that money, like usually the payment that you'll get say on this 65 acre piece covers more than just your cover crop seed and establishment. So we've used that rest of the money maybe on another field to kind of stretch across that. So a lot of people struggle with the, you know, the sticker shock of an extra $20 an acre in seed costs plus seeding it. And we really have started to really look at the economics of it now that we've been down this road for a little bit of time. And I like, we feel like cover crops are super profitable. The money that we are saving in chemicals alone is well covered by cover crops. We've been able to stop using a lot of residual herbicides. We have very few resistant weed problems. And when we do, I, I really think having the diversity really helps with that. Being able to graze cover crop is another really huge way to make back that money in the very short term. I would say a lot of people are hoping for a yield bump because as farmers we think we need more and more yield because we gotta feed the world. But really we gotta focus on staying in business first. And so maybe having an interseeded cover crop might ding your yield a little. I would argue it won't. But even if it does, or even switching to no-till if you have a lower yield, you know, 10 bushels, does that cover your fuel? Absolutely, I would say the fuel savings you get from doing no-till definitely makes up for so-called any yield loss from those first years. But doing cover crops makes you a lot more resilient. We're a lot more able to handle a wet year or a dry year. Yeah, we still experience the stress of it, but in a poly crop like this, we've got two different crops that can kind of, canola might handle moisture more than peas will, or canola isn't going to do as well on sandy ground as peas will. Or in our corn, having something that's kind of covering the soil will help with handling dry. Um, improving our infiltration, I think, is really helpful by having a lot of different plants. Having something like cereal rye established to take up moisture helps. Um, now we're starting to be able to cut back our fertilizer, so we're really starting to s save even more money. If we can't change the commodity price, maybe we can become the least cost producer instead. It takes quite a bit of yield just to cover your rent and all of your fixed costs, all of your input costs. If we can lower some of our input costs, I think, even if we suffer a little yield, our economics still look a lot better. We have to farm for profit, not for yield. I think also a lot of folks that incorporate a soil health management system um, talk a lot about time and quality mm -hmm. time. And you're a young family, you have mm -hmm. a little baby at home mm -hmm. and you don't have a lot of labor on the farm. So can you talk a little bit about how that 
soil health has improved your mm -hmm. quality of time? Well, we have a lot of fun with soil health stuff. So, so we, we like to kick around ideas, go tromp out to the field and look at things and see what things are doing. But we're trying to decrease the amount of labor hours we spend in equipment. Doing a tillage pass in the fall, a tillage pass in the spring, and maybe some extra tillage in between, it takes a lot of time and fuel and equipment and resources. And so being able to cut that out has really helped us to have that time. As, especially as we start to move away even from strip till to just strictly no till. That's, you know, a spray pass for burn down and then a seeding pass. Like that's trying to consolidate that and now trying to do putting nitrogen application with inner seeding, trying to combine that. We're trying to decrease our, our time in the equipment as much as possible. You know, I give my dad a lot of credit for coming back to, coming back from college, coming back to farm with my grandpa. And well, I give credit to my grandpa as well. My grandpa was very open to my dad's ideas and that's huge and being able to move into no-till and strip-till. And obviously not everything was successful, but they, they were able to stick to it. And a lot of people tried it and decided it failed and backed away. But I think my dad did a great job of figuring out a way to make it work and trying to be profitable. And I think he's made, I know he's made huge improvements in the 30 years that he's farmed in our soil. He talks about when you couldn't see across the road uh, and then that was just a regular thing or big washouts and I have no real visualization of that around here. I think that's not a problem for us. I've never tilled a field in my life. My husband still has to help me know the difference between a chisel plow and a cultivator and I'm a farmer. I grew up farming but I still have just not any idea of what tillage is. And now moving forward having this come back. My dad has been great about being open to our ideas, just like my grandpa was open to his ideas. And that's very important. A lot of our friends coming back and wanting to try these things have not had support from their families, and it's been a fight to do everything. And we definitely still disagree about how we do some things, but actually that's to a benefit. Benjamin and me and my dad, we all have different ideas, but we do have all the same goals. We still want our farm to be in the family, we want our children, if they want to, to be able to farm and have a resource that's worth farming and have them set up to farm profitably and be able to join in the operation, maybe add in another enterprise, even another animal enterprise. And we have that goal. We want to improve our soil. And we just all have a, maybe a little bit different timelines or different routes to do so. And so we have all these things we want to try because we all have these ideas that we want to see how they work. Um, and so, like this year, we're trying to phase out strip till. So we have several trials, kind of to convince some of us that aren't as convinced on strip till that, or on, on switching from strip till, that it actually would be a great decision and that it will work well. So, so we have some checks and balances. And I would say Benjamin and I maybe have some crazy ideas some of us think that each other's ideas are crazy, but that kind of pushes us to keep trying new things. However, having someone be like, oh wait, is that gonna work? Or that's gonna be a problem is really helpful as well. It just like helps us think through an idea so we're not as likely to fail. We still have failures and that's part of learning. That's an important part of learning. But being able to work together as a team, even if we maybe have different focuses, different things that are important to us, we're able to be more successful.